thanks very much for your time. Thank you for having me, Lesbeth. You know, we have waited a long time to see you, actually, so it's great to have you finally here. Uh, you haven't been doing a lot of TV interviews, and all of a sudden you're eminently available. Last night, uh, State Com uh, Conservative Party Chairman Mike Long told me he thought Carl Palladino, Cal Carl Palladino had you on the ropes. Do you think that that's true? Well, obviously, uh, I think it's, it's obvious why Mike Long would say that, right? Uh, and it's nice to see you, too, although I can't actually see you no, from this I know. format. Um, obviously, for me now, the campaign season is uh, starting. I did not have a primary election like many of the other candidates, so uh, the campaign season is, is starting. And um, I'm now increasing my activity as a candidate for governor and uh, decreasing my activity as attorney general. I'm still doing my job as attorney general. And, Liz, we still have some very important matters that we're going to be doing from the attorney general's office. But obviously, you'll see a higher level of campaigning now. But you, so you haven't changed your strategy then? Because all of a sudden you're very talkative, you're making a lot of statements yourself about Carl Palladino, whereas before you rely, were relying on surrogates to do so. Well, you know, Liz, I'm in a campaign now. Uh, and the campaign just started when the Republican primary was resolved. Um, I obviously didn't have a Democratic primary. So for me, the campaign season is all of, you know, two weeks old. Um, I don't know in two weeks that you can really have dramatic shifts of, of strategy, but uh, this is my campaign season. So when you were all over upstate New York in your RV, it wasn't campaigning? Oh, no, that was, no, no, that was, uh, that was campaigning, and uh, that was also a lot of fun. I spent uh, a good many days uh, through the summer in upstate New York. I did about 40 counties in an RV with my daughters, as you know, or some component of my daughters, uh, and it was beautiful. You know, uh, to have in one, one consolidated period, to go from the Adirondacks to the Finger Lakes to Western New York, I mean, it was, it's just spectacular, our state. And you tend to forget, or even when you see it in bits and pieces, it was, it was really great. Okay, so you have said, actually, now that you're in this campaign mode, you have made some statements about Carl Palladino, and you've called him extreme. But then you also said that you weren't going to get involved in name-calling. So how is calling someone extreme not name-calling? Oh, no. If you listen to uh, what Mr. Palladino says, you'll know what name-calling is, right? Um, and extreme is not name-calling. Uh, I'm not going to engage in a name-calling campaign. Uh, Mr. Palladino likes to... Uh, use um, uh, colorful language, uh, he likes to curse, he likes to uh, name call. I'm not going to do that. I believe it degrades the government, I believe it degrades the process, I believe it degrades the people of the state. The people of the state are entitled to a smart discussion on issues that matter to them, Liz. This is not a game. It's not for name calling. This is about their mortgage and the education for their child and their job and their disgust watching their state government in chaos. This is very serious stuff, and I'm not going to demean it or degrade it with name calling. Uh, this is also an election with very stark choices. Uh, the choice between me and my opponent is a stark, stark choice. I don't think I've seen as stark a choice, frankly, um, uh, in, my, uh, uh, in my lifetime in the state in career in political elections. Uh, and I believe Mr. Palladino's positions are extreme. I believe that's even more clear since Rick Lazio has dropped out of the race. Did you, you know, wait, 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 hold I'm, on. Before you continue, I just want to ask, did you want Rick Lazio uh, to continue in the race? Because arguably it would have helped you. Well, I, I think actually his dropping out helps me. And I'll, I'll tell you why. And I've, I've been hearing it today, actually. Uh, I'm a Democrat. I'm an independent, uh, running on the Democratic and the independent lines. I'm, I'm basically a moderate. Rick Lazio was a moderate Republican. Uh, Carl Palladino is an extremist as a Republican. With Lazio out and the moderate Republican out, it's now very clear and stark what the choices are. And you know, Liz, when you, when you now look at, uh, you put away the name calling of Mr. Palladino, and look at what the man is saying. His positions are extreme. The man is against choice for a woman in the cases of incest and rape. 
The man says that he thinks children from failing public schools should be taken out of their home and sent to state boarding schools. He says families on welfare should be sent to retrofitted state prisons um, to learn hygiene in work camps. Uh, he wants to cut Medicaid $20 billion, which would put literally thousands of people out of mental uh, health institutions and out of nursing homes. Well, and, and he says, Liz, excuse me one other second. He says the best form of government is a benevolent dictator. A benevolent dictator. Last time I checked, dictatorships were an extreme form of government. I'm going to stick with good old-fashioned democracy. So, uh, yes, I think those are extremist positions. And in this campaign, I'm going to inform the people of the state of New York the difference between me and Mr. Palladino, not to mention the fact that what has to be done, cleaning up Albany, I actually have the experience, the know-how, and the guts to do it. And you know how you know that, Liz? Because I've been doing it. So, Mr. Attorney and you General. You know what I've done as Attorney General? Imagine what I can do as governor. Will you then? I know that you have said that you are open to debates, and I know that you have said that your campaign and Mr. Cal Palladino's campaigns are trying to work out the deal. The problem is that he wants everybody involved, and his campaign has suggested that it would actually be. It would be disparaging to the woman in the race, Kristen Davis, or the African American in the race, Charles Barron, if you didn't include them. Will you debate with minor party candidates, or will you only debate with Carl Palladino? Well, look, I am looking forward to debating Mr. Palladino um, in terms of his de demand now that uh, everyone should be invited, which means, by the way, not just uh, the people you mentioned. You have libertarian line people. You have the Green people, Party uh, candidates. Uh, you, you, Liz, you add it up. Uh, my guess is probably six or seven people. Um, and that's the demand his campaign is making. The campaigns are talking to work out the details. But uh, I look forward to uh, debating Mr. Palladino to the, on the positions to the extent he has them. So is that a no, then? You will not debate if minor party candidates are also involved? That is the discussion they're having. I'm looking forward to debating Mr. Palladino. I want it to be a productive, uh, reasonable discussion so people, again, can get the facts. Because there are important facts here, Liz. As I said, these are two, this is an extreme, uh, stark uh, choice for people. You know, um, and um, the best way to do that is what I'm interested in. Okay, so in speaking of an extreme and stark, you know, there are other candidates in the race. One of them is Charles Barron, and he spoke to the issue of your support among African American voters. And if you don't mind, I just want you to take a listen to it. See, it's disingenuous for him to come to Harlem, and the only thing he has to say is Paladino's a racist, and black leaders are saying we got to stop Paladino. Everybody knows he's a racist, loose cannon, cannon, but also Cuomo is participating in racial benign neglect. He has done nothing for our community over the years. He should have come to Harlem and talked about the 50% black male unemployment. What you going to do, Okay, Andrew? wait. All right, so now Charles Barron is, is himself has some extreme points of view. However, there are other people in the African-American community who say that perhaps your support there isn't as strong, but it speaks to a larger issue. You called yourself a moderate. What about the liberal base of your party? You can't win without them. Well, look, uh, you, uh, you know my support among the African-American community, Liz. You've, talked to, you've read many polls that talk about it, um, my history with the African-American community. Uh, going back to when I started uh, 150 years ago, when I was in my 20s, I started building homeless housing and affordable housing uh, in the poorest communities all across the state. I was the HUD secretary. Um, I worked in the most impoverished communities all across this nation. I championed Bill Clinton's empowerment zones, uh, primarily helping minority families. I, was in charge of doing all the anti-discrimination work and the fair housing work, brought thousands of cases. So, I mean, uh, you know my record. I understand we're in the political silly season, so people will say what they need to say uh, at these times. But my record in terms of delivering uh, for the uh, African-American community, I am very proud of it. And I'm, I'm comfortable and confident in it. 
and I will be presenting it to the voters and we will see what they say. But do you believe that Carl Palladino is a racist? Um, I think the, uh, I understood you were saying, uh, referring back to what Mr. Ba Mr. Barron's comments that he's a racist. Uh, no. You know, I, I think. I'm asking racist, if you believe you're, he's you're a racist. Asking, Racist, you're asking, what does a person have in his heart? I don't know what he has in his heart. He says he's not a racist. Uh, that's not for me to decide. Uh, the emails that he sent out, the words that he, uh, and images that he sent out, um, look, these were offensive at a minimum, right? Because you won't even show them on your show. <laughs> so if you are saying that you can't even show the images and the words, uh, obviously, they're highly offensive. Well, I actually, uh, they've been shown on some national programs. I haven't even really thought about showing them, to be honest with you. But it does oh. beg the question, though, about people's emails. I mean, are we going to come down to a point where I'm going to have to ask you, Andrew Cuomo, can I please see all of your emails to make sure you've never forwarded anything inappropriate? Liz, if you, uh, you're in a political campaign, if you send out emails to people with these kinds of images, uh, don't be surprised if someone asks you to answer for them, you know. Um, I think that's very fair indeed. And so... Now, the emails you send me, don't worry about. Nobody will ever see those. I don't think I've ever <laughs> sent you an email, Mr. Attorney General, but all you're your emails having, are clean, having. right? All your emails are clean. You're having... Oh, my... I know emails, Liz. I specialize in emails. I do it for a living. Now, you're also 